preps turn on the camera. I'm back for the third, third clock. Yeah, I decided to share this with you because it's been a long while since I've done one in front of you. I've made many in the meantime. And stay tuned to the end because I do a full assembly of a clock. I show and tell about the drill bits that you use to make the center. I show you about the different size stems and mechanisms, which is important. And I'll also show you how to adjust the length of the hands if they're too long. Yes, I'm in need of uh, clock faces, so therefore I make more clocks. So this is the silver, iridescent silver by Golden. All right. Shading gray with Modern Masters pearl white. Nicolazzo gold. Actually, let me go with, yeah, let's just stay the same. Nicolazzo gold with Zeus. Iridescent gold by Golden with 24 karat gold by DecoArt. Love this combination. And black by Amsterdam, lamp black. And a little bit of carbon black by Golden to thin it down. And as you see, it's thickened up. All right, select a bidder. Boy, I should have spread that out a little bit more. What'll happen is I'll blow and I'll be blowing it right over the pillow. All right, select a bidder, white, And the black. So this is with my American Floatrol Cell Activator Recipe Video 141. I'll link it above. And I'm just going to talk through the blowout real quick. So what I always try to do, this is how I like to do it, although I have found a different way in the meantime. I blow straight down into the cell activator to try to get it to spread out in as much of a full circle as possible. And that's actually a nice shape right there. And then once I had that full circle formed, there's like a little divot, and where the divot meets the paint, there's a ridge. I blow at that ridge and try to blow that cell activator over the top of the paint while the paint is blowing out over the pillow. And I do that going all the way around. I don't have to go all the way to the edge because once I spin it, it'll start stretching out and filling up to the edge anyway. So you just want to have enough paint to get you there and then let the spinning take care of the rest. So I'm going to skip cut some here. As I'm pulling the pillow to the edges, you can see, see what I'm doing, and I'm just going to skip cut ahead. The pillow. Center. So I created this video before I had learned that in the cooler weather, you really need to heat up your paints a little bit to get them to thin down some. And with the thicker paints, it just makes it more difficult for the cell activator to interact with them. All right, let's give it a gentle spin, get the show on the road. It'll come back. Come on. Well, aren't we stubborn today? I tell you. Weather plays havoc sometimes with your painting. Pay attention. Practically speaking, the center of the clock will be in the center. So if I don't have everything cell activated, it's not 
going to be the end of the world. It's coming up anyway. So what happens is once it starts to spread, the paint gets thin and the paint will start to push through the cell activator that's sinking because the titanium wipe is one of the heavier uh, pigments. So that paint is going to sink down and as it's sinking, it's going to create the cells around the colors that are below it. Same with the black, although the black is not as dense. So there's like this, this push, push, drop, float, and gravity going on at the same time, as best as I can figure. And in the process of, and you can do this with regular paints too, just using, getting cells by using your density, having these paints pass through the night like ships going up and down in the, in the mixture, and you'll, you'll get cells. Of course, not just the density, but also the, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? The consistency. So the, the, the pillow, I'm sorry, the pillow is thicker because you want it to stay down. Oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. This is looking really pretty. But let's go that way with it a little bit. Yeah. I like this one. Those center cells are really cool. They're like monsters. I think we're almost done. Hopefully this will do it. Yeah, that'll do it. Very pretty. All right, folks. I'm going to pick this up, show you guys where we are. I put this guy to bed. Oh, I, I have an air bubble that just popped up. Look at this one. Beautiful. I love these. So easy, so fast. And I'm back. Um, I was not planning on including this in this video, but... Since I was doing this anyway, I figured I might as well show you guys what I do when I get all these clock hands that aren't the right sizes. Now, when you order them in bulk on Amazon, you get a good deal. You get a big pack and they give you a variety of sizes, but sometimes you get clock hands that are too big or ridiculously small. Very rarely for the CDs do you get the clock hands the right size. So I've resorted to um, cutting them down to my own size to fit the piece that I have. So I'm not sure which video I'm showing you today, whether it was this one or this one. But anyway, the first thing I do is I uh, drill the hole with a drill bit. And, well, let me just cover that real quick. So when I'm getting ready to drill, so this is what it looks like when I before I start. Now... You don't want this to happen. That's what happened to this guy. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't have him, uh, when I had him sitting down, first of all, I was going the wrong direction. I was going through the front, which you probably want to go through the back. And um, anyway, it snaps. You got to be careful with how you're doing it. Uh, so anyway, you drill from the back through the tape. This has still got the tape on it. These others have been finished off in the back. And I always go progressively larger from a small drill bit to get the first hole, like a, you know, a starter hole, then gradually increasing the size until I get to the size of the actual, um, I think it's three eighths of an inch, which is the actual ultimate size I need to fit my stem. So that's a little tip. I start with small drill bit and work myself up larger with the tape still on. Then in between all that, after I get the tape off, I end up finishing the backs, like I did here. And then I um, figure out what I'm going to do with my clock. Now, let me show you something else. When you buy your clock mechanism, you need to pay attention to what size you're getting. This is called the stem. 
you want to have for a CD, you don't want this big, long stem because it's just too big. It's ridiculous. But now for something like a piece of wood that's a half an inch, perfect. For these little guys, you want a half inch stem. So you put the half inch stem through. But even before that, I always put this little hanger on. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Anyway, so because I've got these hands that are way too big, and sometimes they're the wrong color and end up spray painting them, but for purposes of this demonstration, let's start. So you, you get a kit with these kind, this kind of these kind of pieces, the, the screw or the nut, a little finishing washer. You can use this if you want on the back. <clears throat> second hand, a minute hand, hour, second hand. So obviously I can't use this. Let's start with the hour hand. I can't use this. Well, I guess I could if you really want to have a weird clock with a strange uh, size to it. Um, but that's too big. That's the, that's the hour hand. Here's the minute hand, even bigger. It's also, I also damaged it. So I need to cut it to size. So what I find works is these little fingernail clippers. They work like a champ. This stuff is really thin, this metal. It snaps, snips really easy. So let me just get this to about the right size. I'm gonna need it. See how easy that is, snips? I'm gonna keep going a little farther down. Maybe a little farther down until I get to about the size of where that hour, uh, minute, um, hour hand should be. That's probably still a little too big. Let's take it down a little bit more. Still a clunky size. It's still a little thick, but you know what? It's what I work. It's got what I got to work with. I don't have any other way of cutting it. So here's this guy. Let me get this down to a little bit of a normal size. Keep going a little more. This is my minute hand. Just trim it right about to the size I need. So that's about that. Get it on there. It should go on. Hmm. Don't make me a liar. Okay, so that's that. And then the second hand. We'll trim that down. Okay, so those are about good size. So let me just take it all apart real quick. <clears throat> These are a little clunky. They're a little big, but like I say, it's, it's what I have to work with. So let me put on the little washer, put on the little nut. Just screw it on, finger tight's fine. Add my hands. Like I say, I'm not in love with these, but you know, it is what it is. It... It's still a little long. I'm gonna cut that a little more. Cut this one a little more. And then put on my little second hand. And uh, if I had a battery, let's see. I got a battery. Let's see which way to go. Here we go. We're in business. And that's what she looks like. Set the time to whatever it is and let her go.
there she is. So the whole point of this is to just show you, you can really snip it with a pair of scissors. I find I like these because there's a little bit of shape to it. So it kind of rounds it a little bit and not just have, have a blunt end. Um, but yeah, don't, don't waste these, put them to use. Although I don't know what you do with these things. These are silly, silly small. <laughs> I'm not even sure what you would use those for. I'll tell you, I, if anybody out there, if you guys have any source where you get uh, clock hands for this size, let me know, because I'd really like to know that. All right, that's all for now, everybody. So everyone, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the video, the fluid art creation, and all the tidbits about the assembly of the clock face. Here are the final results, the resin results. At the very end, I will have a playlist link to other clock creations. And please, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, hit the bell and all, leave a comment. Thumbs up would be nice too. I get back to everybody. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. So that's all for now. So until next time, take care.